Okay, we are back. This is another episode of The Courteous Corner, and I know that I promised a video on the importance of enjoying the journey, but I thought this one was very important. I want to make it before it slips my mind. It is about nutrition. Um, the commonly the commonly asked question or theme that continues to come up with new clients and existing clients is, um, what, should my, what should my macros be? Or what kind of diet should I be on? Or can you give me a meal plan? And while there's no definitive to this, there's no one diet fits all, you know, we hear about keto, we hear about paleo, we hear about the Mediterranean, we hear about all these diet fads being the answer. And the truth of the matter is that there is no one, one size fits all. And actually it's very goal dependent and it's a lot more rough than you might expect. So I wanna take you through five different levels of dieting and I don't even like the word dieting because truly it should be um, nutrition period or your nutritional lifestyle um, your, or your eating behaviors because their diet infers that there is a starting and stopping point. So without getting too overwinded on that part, I just want to break down these different levels of, okay, is, is it just calories in, calories out? Is it, should I be focusing on full macros? Should I do IIFYM? What is it? What does it all mean? So let's start at number one, which is calories in, calories out. Ultimately, this is for a weight loss client who doesn't have any specific body composition or musculature goals. Okay, at the end of the day, if calories in is less than calories out, you will lose weight. So if we're taking an obese or an overweight client, or just a client who just wants to lose weight, like that is their only focus, really we're just focusing on calories in versus calories out. Now, if they don't care about what they're losing, then we don't have to track protein, although I highly, highly recommend this, and that's the next level that we're going to talk about. But if they just want to lose weight and that's the most important part and we can focus on muscle retention or, or lean muscle gain later, calories in versus calories out, you will lose weight. I can't promise any body composition, um, you know, specifics around that. The next level then would be um, calories and protein if we're tracking calories and protein. So we're tracking calories, making sure that those are, if you're supposed to be in a deficit, less than you know, that you're in a deficit, which means you're taking in less than you are burning. And that's done through calculation, of course. But then the second part to that would be focusing on protein, making sure you're getting the protein needs for your body. And what this is going to allow you to do then is burn more fat. So we're not just focused on weight loss, we're focused on fat loss. Because we're focusing on that protein, this is going to allow you to retain, if not gain, as much lean muscle as possible, helping the fat loss process. And ideally, for me, this is the best way, ideally changing your body composition. Weight loss is typically um, the, the least sought after goal, at least it should be, even though society tells us something a little bit different and I'm not sure why. Um, body composition is ultimately more important because heart disease, um, you know, diabetes, um, chronic diseases of this nature are related more towards body fat, not body weight. So the body weight thing is outdated and we need to improve upon that. So the second level would be calories, protein, and then focusing on percentage ranges for those macros like carbs and fats. And the ideal percentage ranges would be 45 to 65% of your remaining caloric intake should come from carbohydrates. Yes, 45 to 65%. And then um, 10 to, I'm sorry, 20 to 35% for fats. So, you know, from here, we really want to pay attention to our individual bodies and see how you feel best. Is it higher carb or higher fat? I know I tell my clients this all the time. For me, I, I operate so much better on lower fats and higher carbohydrates. Um, that's just my body. And I've noticed the sweet spot with that. So that's where you can start to learn and become a student of your own body. The next one up from that, this would be, this would be a, um, more serious athletic approach. Um, and this is the one that I typically go towards this, this middle one right here is calories and protein 
with the percentage ranges, focusing on quality of sources and a full rainbow array of food intake. And the reason for this is because if you follow number two, which is just calories and protein and percentages, this would be like IIFYM if it fits your macros, where as long as you're hitting those numbers, food choices don't matter. And while you may achieve some body composition changes, this is not ideal for long-term health and performance because quality of food does matter because of the micronutrient profiles, meaning the vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients that you're getting from things like fruits and vegetables, leafy greens, you know, even complex and simple carbohydrates. So this number three is kind of your middle of the ground if you're, uh, if, if you're living and focusing on not only body composition, but healthy lifestyle and feeling and performance too. You really wanna do that. And how you wanna do that is just make your plate the rainbow. You know, the more color, the better, because from each color of food, you're technically getting a different array of vitamins and minerals. Very, very important guys. You will not only, um, so if you're, if, you're, if you're at number two and you're looking to take yourself to the next level, jump to number three and focus on quality, uh, not just quantity. Okay, the next level would be actually full macros. So we could take your profile, your body fat, your weight, your, your activity level, your age, and plug it in and, and decide on very precise macros. This would be something like a competitor or an elite level athlete, a CrossFit athlete or something like that, um, where they are going to be very diligent, not only about the quality of choices, but the, the quantities precisely to the gram. So we've got an exact amount of calories, we've got an exact amount of protein, we've got an exact amount of carbs and fats. And usually these athletes of, of this level, or if you're focusing on, on this level, you're gonna still, you're, you're, you're gonna wanna hit those numbers. You know, you don't have to be uh, number one on because there is room for error, even in tracking. Um, like a 2% error. So if you're hitting those targets within a two to 10% ratio, uh, a percentage, then you'll be on point. And this is how most athletes at the elite level follow their programming. Um, and actually the next level up from that would be your serious athletes, Olympic level. You know, we're talking professional football players, professional CrossFit athletes, a uh, gymnast. You're going to do full uh, full macro profile, including the quality with the micronutrients, uh, with supplementation. Uh, the, the last piece to that would be timing. There is truth through timing matters. When we're focusing on an elite level athlete where we have to perform at the highest level possible, then timing matters. And so these, this is your, your pinnacle. This is your peak where we're focusing on full macros, full micros, including supplementation as necessary, and then your, your food and nutrient timing. Ideally, we want our carbs and proteins to be centered around our workout time as closely as possible. And then we're tapering off those carbs um, towards the further we get away from our workout, depending on your intensity level. Obviously, this takes a lot more calculations and fitting into someone's schedule, especially if your schedule is all over the place. And that's why most people don't follow something like this because it's not ideal for a daily living. Um, to sum it all up, I really would, could recommend you guys fall in that middle category where we're focusing on hitting a certain calories within a range, maybe a 10% range. So for instance, if you have a 1700 calorie budget, um, but some days you're hitting, you know, you could be plus or minus 170 per day that you're hitting your target. So it's focusing on calories, focusing on protein, and then focusing on the quality of food choices around that. This is really where I recommend most clients and most people that are trying to make this as a lifestyle and feel well and achieve their, their physical goals. This is the level in which I recommend staying at. And this is how I coach at. Uh, I really hope this helped you guys. In order to do something like this, you obviously need a professional to be figuring out, you know, your numbers. Those calculators online are, are very diverse in nature and you really don't know what, what is, what, what equation they're plugging in and also, um, what parts of your body 
truly matter in making that equation precise. Um, additionally, you know, using a food logging app like MyFitnessPal is extremely helpful because we can see then your trends and, and, and even something like that is not even exactly precise. Uh, again, 2%, maybe even more um, variation in calories and macro profile and the foods in there because it is user centered, meaning the users are the ones putting in most of the, the food, unless you see that blue check mark that MyFitnessPal has um, you know, put their stamp of approval on it. So again, there's room for error or variation on there. Most importantly though, is be consistent. Be consistent in your food logging and you'll know, you know, if, if it says I'm eating 1700 calories and I'm consistently losing weight or gaining weight, I don't know, we may be under or, or over calculating based on what your body is doing. And then that way we can adjust it. So there's, there's no like, here's your, here's your calorie, here's your macros. And then the answer is going to appear and your success will happen. It's like, here's your initial targets. Here's what we should be ideally, according to the numbers be doing here. And then let's pay attention to the body, see how it changes. And is that truth or not? You know what I mean? So I hope this helps. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, and when it comes to keto and uh, the carnivore, and it's like, all these things are great. At the end of the day though, what matters is if we're talking strictly weight loss is are you in a calorie deficit or not? And from there, it's how does your body respond to each approach? I know my body would be wrecked on keto. I cannot do that. I need carbohydrates. Um, frankly, most of us do, but this is where you've got to open your mind and decide what intuitively is best for you if you were to maintain that way of living for the rest of your life because sustainability and consistency at the end of the day is your number one path to success you want to make this a lifestyle um not a starting and stopping point Hope this helped you guys. I will promise to make that video about the journey next time, but this was very important and I wanted to destigmatize some of these nutritional myths and facts. Have a great rest of your day and please let me know if there's a topic, uh, nutrition, mindset, spiritually, a fitness, uh, performance that you want me to dive into and I can do that on the next coach's video. Have a great day guys.